Good morning, Honors Physics students, and welcome to another edition of Honors Physics. It's Mr. Finn again, coming at you from Neighborly Northville, talking about the idea of electric fields. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, potential energy. Uh, that is an, a, a subject that we're going to need to tackle before we head to voltage a little bit. I know I jumped the gun a little bit yesterday, talking about charges and uh, voltages, but before we get to that, we do need to tackle something about the potential energy in an electric field versus a gravitational field. So we're going to hit that today and make sure we can get you guys into the voltage discussion on Monday. All right, really reiterating a couple of announcements. Number one, um, there, Thursday is our day. Thursday is the day for the Google Meets. We're going to do that at 11 a.m. I have office hours for a half an hour before then from 10.30 to 11. So if you guys need to just email something in or you want a parent to email in or you want this private discussion to email or even on Google Meet, uh, we can get that going through an office hour at 10.30 on Thursday. At 11 o'clock, I'll have our class Google Meet so you guys can check in with me and uh, ask any questions or just refine some things, or maybe just check in, see how you guys are doing. Uh, real quick, a question came in about Mr. Finn's hat selections. Yes, I know, I'm wearing different hats most of the time. This one, though, somebody said, hey, is that a, uh, some kind of a GSH, what does that stand for? Uh, it's not Gordon's uh, Food Service or some kind of Golden State. It's actually the gong show the gong show i don't know what that is built in the locker room now gong show hat gong show so i don't know if that's uh you know kind of describing the state of affairs in america as how we're handling this virus but this is the gong show hat now i'm not saying that this podcast is a gong show of course it's not this video cast this is actually educational news regarding physics. So, let's talk about the difference today between electric potential energy, that is PE electrical versus PE gravitational. Now, you guys will remind yourselves that we have had many different types of potential energy. We focused on potential energy gravitational, but we've also had potential energy elastic. So springs and their energy that they could potentially have. If a compressed spring was allowed to decompress, that potential energy could then turn into a different kind. Maybe a bungee cord elastic potential energy. But the PE electrical is something that's a little bit different. And drawing a parallel to what we already know as a gravitational field sometimes makes it easier to understand the electric field. So let's go to the board and find our visual for today. Okay guys, we're back. Now, you may recall that when talking about energy, we were talking about the units of joules. And energy is an overriding concept for all sciences. So whether it be physics, biology, earth science, chemistry, environmental science, energy is one of those overriding concepts that touches all sciences. Now, you will recall some of our discussion in the first semester regarding potential energy, gravitational speaking. Okay, for starters, it's going to be important for us to recognize the frame of reference of where we're going to start. You may recall, physics is allowed to start wherever we want. So, we typically put the ground at zero height in the mechanics problem. Zero height, no meters. We measure the height. Now, I just drew a box up here. Remember, we've drawn this box before. Uh, I'm going to make it one kilogram. The one kilogram box is raised to a height of 10 meters. And you guys will remember from our earlier discussion that a one kilogram box has a weight of 10 newtons. And if raised to 10 meters, then 10 newtons times 10 meters would be 100 joules. So you've got 100 joules of potential energy. But more importantly, this 10 newton weight is subjected to 
is a gravitational field. In other words, this 10 newton weight, because it's raised to a height of 10 meters, has what's called gravitational potential. The potential for the field to do work on this item. The field, the gravitational field, will do work on this box to bring it to a height of 10 meters down to zero. When the box gets to zero, it will have no more gravitational potential. The field will have done all the work. Now, let's make this analogous to an electric field that we discussed yesterday. I have an area of high potential as discussed or seen from a zero potential area. Now I'm going to put a negative plate down here. A negative plate, which I'm going to call zero potential. It may have negative charge, but I'm still going to call it zero potential. Up here, I have an equally charged positive plate. So let's say my negative plate was negative 5 coulombs. And my positive plate was positive 5 coulombs. Certainly I'm going to have a 10 coulomb difference. Or I'm going to have an electric field that exists between these two plates. Now, if I were to put at this point a test charge, let's put a random proton right at the high potential mark. Just like the 10 Newton box, this random proton would be forced due to the electric field to move downward. In other words, the electric field will do work on this charge to bring it to zero potential. Hmm. The electric field is going to do work. It's a force field. It's going to do work on that charge. Now let's talk about how much work. If we were to talk about gravitational potential energy, We'd be discussing this in terms of joules. Well, really what that would mean is the gravitational field is doing work on a mass. Weight of this object times the height will give us the potential energy in gravitational terms. If we wanted to create potential energy for that box, we would have to do work against the field to lift the box up. We would input work or energy into the system to drive the box against its zero height value. Weight times height is W times H. Now, more importantly, we do remember that weight is a function of mass times gravity. So what PE sub G really is, is mass, gravity, height, where G is the gravitational field. Are you with me? That's important to know. The gravitational field is actually a function of the universal law of gravitation. More on that in just a moment. Let's make an analogy to our electric field. PE electrical should also be work done by the field. Force times distance. This electric field is going to move that charge a certain distance. Now visually, I made it the same as the height. That distance will be something in meters. What will that force be? We could use Coulomb's law, or we could use a substitute for Coulomb's law. Q times E. Charge times the electric field. Because remember, electric field is force per unit of charge. If we divide that charge, or multiply that charge out on both sides, then Q times E will give me Coulomb's Law of the Force. Okay, guys. That makes our potential energy gravitational Q times E times D, where E is the electric field that's doing the work on the system. Mass, gravity, height, where G is your gravitational field. Q, which takes the place of mass, that's our, t our test charge, times E, our electric field, 
in between these points. Uh, D. D is analogous to H. Well, I'm hoping that helps in terms of understanding potential energy gravitational versus potential energy electrical. Now, let me go through one more thing regarding gravitational fields and forces and the gravitational force, G, coming from the universal law of gravitation. Let's visit that next. Okay, guys, one more look at this. Let's take a look at the law of gravitation we had from the first semester. The law of gravitation, you might recall, from Isaac Newton is the force of gravity, the overall force of the universal law of gravitation, was the universal gravitational constant times m1 times m2 over r squared. So, if we took force divided by mass, force divided by mass, we would come up with g m2 over r squared because m1s would cancel out. You also may recall from the first semester that g times m divided by r squared for something like the earth would yield the gravitational acceleration due to the Earth, the Earth's gravitational field. Now, if we did the same thing for the moon, the only thing that would change would be the radius of the moon and the mass of the moon. And we would find the moon's gravitational field. We could do this for any celestial body, Saturn, the moon, Venus, Mars, right? the Venus has a body. And you would become up with a gravitational field for each and every planet or heavenly body. The same is true of electric fields, except for we're not dealing with masses, we're dealing with charges. But the idea is the same. Force electrical is governed by Coulomb's law. K, Q1 times Q2 over R squared. Hmm, very similar to the gravitational law. So, force divided by charge is a way of saying electric field. Hmm. Electric field is F divided by Q1. Now let's take Coulomb's law. K Q1 Q2 over R squared. But I'm dividing by Q1. Therefore Q1 do not matter. It doesn't matter what test charge you put in the electric field. The electric field is still going to be a property of the charges that create the field. It's just like a gravitational field is a property of the mass of the planet you're standing on, how far you are away from its center. And that's it, the gravitational constant. So for electric fields, K times Q2 over R squared gives you the electric field of that particular situation. Notice, electric fields and gravitational accelerations, or the gravitational fields, are very similar. I hope that helps, guys, maybe give you an idea of what electric fields really are and why they are vectors and how they are described as newtons per coulomb, or in this case, kq over r squared, very similar to gm over r squared. The electric field creates a system in which electric potential energy will reduce if the field does the work. Now, if I push a charge against the field, I have to do work against the electric field. Is it really possible to do work against electric fields? Of course it is. Every time we charge a battery, we are doing work to create an electric field that was somehow reduced. So charging your phones is a way of you doing work, although it be another electric system, to create an electric field within the battery system. I hope that helps, guys. And we'll talk more Monday about voltage, which we are going to need this concept of electric potential energy. So I'm hoping that you got a little bit out of today, and you can review this a little bit with some of the reading you have for Chapter 17. Again, I'll be doing some homework review next week. Uh, hopefully you got a little bit of uh, a chance to get through electric field problems from last time, and uh, we'll do our Google Meet on Thursday. We'll also hit voltage on Monday, so be ready for that. Okay, guys, have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time.